Hey there, welcome back to eFishing. I'm Rodney. Have y'all ever been out on the lake idling around and wondering what that was? Now, that's not fish. That's thermocline. So what's a thermocline, you ask? Well, let's go. Let's go show you. So during the spring and winter, water in the lake is evenly mixed through the water column. This condition is known as isothermal. The water temperature is similar in all locations in the water column, from the shallows to the deepest parts of the lake. However, as the surface water warms in the spring and in the early summer, it becomes less dense than the colder, deeper water in the lake. Cold, cold water is more dense than warm water, and less dense water will float on more dense water. These differences in water temperature initiate thermal stratification the separation of water based on temperature. This stratification forms three separate layers of water, the epilimnion, the metilimnion, and hypolimnion. The epilimnion is the warmer, less dense, more buoyant water near the lake surface. The hypolimnion is the cooler, colder, more dense, less buoyant water near the lake bottom. The layer that separates the upper and bottom layers is the metalimnion. This is also known as the thermocline. The thermocline is a transitional layer of water. It's a thin but distinct layer of water that has a drastic change in water temperature. It will change from very warm to cold very rapidly and separate the upper warmer layer from the lower colder layer. Once these layers are formed, they do not mix. During the spring, dissolved oxygen just like water temperature is evenly mixed. After the thermocline develops in early summer, a hostile environment to fish and other aquatic organisms starts to develop below the thermocline. As organic matter, for example, leaves or dead algae, sinks to the bottom of the lake, it starts to decay by microbes. As part of this microbial decomposition, the oxygen in the bottom layer is used up. Since the upper and bottom layers do not mix, no new oxygen is available to the bottom layer. As summer progresses, the oxygen in the bottom layer is used completely up and can be completely absent. The bottom layer then becomes a dead zone. So now that you know what the thermocline is, how do you recognize it when you're out on the lake? Well, probably the best way to do is if you have one of these things. A water quality sign that goes down there and reads temperature and dissolved oxygen and you can plot it out and and see exactly where it is that's what the professionals do like the Corps of Engineers TVA and your state water quality agencies they'll go out they'll monitor lakes and they'll use one of these signs to, to measure temperature and dissolved oxygen throughout the water column now, you probably don't have one of these things sitting around, but there's things you can do to find this. You can go to your local lake water quality management page. Now, that could be the state agency. It could be the Corps of Engineers. So here, let's go to the Corps of Engineers site, and sometimes they even put it on Facebook. If y'all do Facebook, you can go out there and look at that. But you can go to their site, and you can find this data. So let's go look at that data. So once you find your lake on the Corps of Engineers site, look around and look for something like this. It says lake temperature or water quality data, and then click on that. So once you click on that button there, you should see a chart like this at the top of the page. And then if you scroll down, you'll actually see the raw data that they used to make this chart, which can be quite helpful. So when you're looking at these charts, figure out what's the water temperature and what the dissolved oxygen is. And for this one, it's the blue squares. So you notice over there on the right hand side of the chart, those, those squares for each one of the measurements is, is pretty consistent, you know, down to about 12 foot or so and then there starts to be this rapid decline in temperature all the way down to 
oh, 32 or 3 foot, and then the temperature starts to be more stable. This area where the, the flashing red circle is, is your thermocline. You'll also notice the orange circles, which is the dissolved oxygen. There's also a rapid decrease in this area too, all the way down to zero. So we've looked at the chart, now let's look at the individual data points. And if we, we know just by looking at the chart that the thermocline is somewhere between 12 and 30 foot. But if we look at this individual data points and we notice down here at 20 foot, the water temperature is 22 degrees and the dissolved oxygen is 2.3. Now 22 degrees is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. But the problem is that 2.3, that's really low dissolved oxygen and there's not many fish that can survive in that. So if it was me, I would be looking in that 18 foot range because the dissolved oxygen is a little over five there and that's probably where I would tend to concentrate my fishing effort in is that 18 19 foot maybe 20 somewhere in there to look for those fish because that water is going to be the coolest water and it's going to have the most available oxygen to them once you go down below 22 foot the dissolved oxygen is 0 0.43 and no fish can live in that so the other way there's one other way if you don't have a sawn but you do have a depth finder and you can use 2d or down scan to do this now down scans a little more it shows a little more detail so let's go look at it all right so here we are we're looking at the sonar if you can look right here you can see this clutter here and you can see this clutter over here there's some fish right here on the down scan and right here let's take a screenshot of that but you can also see down here in this clutter but here on the down scan you see this extra clutter that you don't see over here on the on the 2d sonar this right in here is the thermocline on the 2d and you can see those fish right there about 12 foot hanging on and i think on this lake thermocline starts about 12 and probably goes down to 15 or 16 foot and then the bottom layer starts so there you go that's how you recognize the thermocline with your 2d and your down scan imaging on your sonar it's not that hard Sometimes you have to play with your sensitivity a little bit. So one thing I like to do is I like to turn my sensitivity up until you get the screen full of clutter. So once I get that sensitivity turned up, here's what I'll do. So you can see here, the screen is full of clutter. And then I'll go to my sensitivity and I'll just start backing it down until that clutter goes away. But you can still see down here, this junk, this down here at the bottom, and then right above it here is the thermocline. Now once you adjust that sonar, you just idle around and look. Now sometimes you'll see stuff down there, and you go, is that the thermocline? Well, it may be or maybe not. So idle around and just observe your sonar and look for that line on your sonar. If it's consistent across the lake or across the embayment that you're in, more than likely that's where the thermocline is or that's where the hypolimnion is, the bottom layer. Now remember the thermocline is just above that so you may not see the actual thermocline but what you're seeing is that hypolimnion, that bottom layer of water. And remember the thermocline is just, it's a narrow band and it'll be just above that, that bottom layer. So now that you know what the thermocline is, the most important thing is how do you fish it? So let's go talk about that. So during the winter and spring, remember that the water is isothermal and the water temperatures are evenly mixed. Fish can be shallow, they can be in the mid depths, or they can be deep. However, in the summer, when the thermocline develops, Fish can be shallow, for example, in the backs of creeks, 
main lake pockets around submerged weeds, stumps, brush piles, or logs, or fish may be relating to deeper structure, such as points, ledges, humps, where the places where the thermocline intersects these, these types of structures, or fish may suspend over open water. Due to the lack of the oxygen below the thermocline, fish cannot survive there, even though they may want to be there due to the colder water. One additional place fish might be, if your lake has standing timber, fish may be suspended in the timber or just above it. So there's a couple of key things I want to leave you with about this thermocline. Now, all lakes aren't going to have one. Example, TVA lakes. Those lakes, they have a lot of current that blows through them, and that keeps the thermocline from developing because it keeps that water churned up. Now, another thing to keep in mind about the thermocline, it's not the same in all lakes. All lakes are different. Some lakes, it might be eight or 10 foot deep. Other lakes, it might be 20, 30, 40 foot deep. Now, that's all gonna depend on how clear your water is. So if you're in a, a lake that's got real clear water, let's say Del Hollow, for example, that thermocline might set up down there in 30 or 40 foot of water and it's pretty deep. You go to another lake that's got that pea green soupy look to it and you can only see maybe six inches down in it. That's where your thermocline is probably going to set up around 10 foot or so. Anyways, hope this helps y'all understand the thermocline. If you got any questions, shoot them down there in the comments. I'll try to answer them. I'm Rodney with eFishing. Thanks for stopping by. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. We'll catch y'all out fishing next time. We're out.